Good morning and welcome to the Lady Chapel of the Church of St. Ignatius Loyola. As we gather this day to worship our God, let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We come together once again as a community of faith, as the children of God, as brothers and sisters. And as the disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to bear witness to his cross and his resurrection as Savior of the world and to share God's love as well. But we often fail to do that in sin. And so for our sinfulness, let us pray for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the glory of God revealed to our world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the comfort of God's truth here in our midst. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with our God in heaven and you plead our cause. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, for there are not your ways unfair. When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, 
It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. He has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Our response, remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Extraordinary words of scripture, and they could not be more appropriate than for the times in which we now live. Challenged by them. Let's get an understanding of them to see why I'm saying how pertinent they are today. Today, a few days ago, last week, the last few years, and equally and probably more important for the near future coming in the next several weeks. Ezekiel was a prophet. He was a prophet in the great city of Jerusalem. It's a city where the people knew that God was ever faithful to them. He made them prominent and prosperous. But Ezekiel is in their midst reminding them of the ways in which they have turned their backs on God. Ezekiel 
how their arrogance and self-interest is jeopardizing their very existence. So Ezekiel is there with them, saying, if this persists and we turn our back on God, then we will self-destruct and someone more powerful than we will come into this great city and we will be held captive. So Ezekiel was trying to reflect to the people of Israel, to those especially in the city of Jerusalem, saying, look at yourselves, look at the manner in which you are living your lives and turn away from it. Go back, go back to the ways of those who have preceded us in faith, believing in the strength of our relationship in God and living our lives accordingly. And then, historically, we need to understand Ezekiel's century before Christ and the great armies of Nineveh with King Nebuchadnezzar came, invaded that part of the world, conquered the kingdoms of Israel sacked and destroyed the great city of Jerusalem and brought the citizens of Jerusalem to Babylon to be held as prisoners. And so what we hear today from the prophet Ezekiel is when he is in their midst in Babylon and he says to themselves, we have turned our backs on God and on one another. We lost sight of the rule of the Lord. And because of that, we have been vanquished. Our division, our conceit, our self-interest has brought us to this ruin. But we have a chance to go back, he said. We can regain the soul of our nation. You see, this writing of Ezekiel was intended for the nation of Israel, for all the people, reminding them of their wickedness that they shared as a people, as a nation, as a country. Turn back, he says. Turn back to the rule of the Lord and we will be restored to what God has intended for us. So that's the historical context. How more timely a reading for us to hear. Because you see, we stand on the threshold of the death of democracy in our own country, divided like we have never been, living by a rule of whim based on conceit, based on ego, based on self-interest that is destroying us from within. We need to hear the words of Ezekiel Look at yourselves and return, return for us to the rule of to what it means to be faithful to what you are called to be. And we have observed in Ezekiel's words, self-destruct. Among themselves. And so we need to hear the words of Paul. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has reminded us of who we are in the eyes of God. We are sisters and brothers. Our lives must reflect it even He bears all things in order to acknowledge God's love. But we must turn from the ways that divide us, he said. There could be no acting simply out of pure interest. It is for the good of all, all our sisters and brothers, what we refer to as the common good. That's what we're called to by our faith, to be imitators of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to know what it is to live a life of compassion and mercy and forgiveness and love, serve one another respect one another, lift up those who have been downtrodden, be with them, live a life dedicated 
out of love of our Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. native New Yorker are wrong. Our one and Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ who shows us what it is to act out of love and compassion and mercy and forgiveness and understanding reflecting God. You see, readings this day are very pertinent to us. The foundations, the principles upon which this great nation was founded are at risk and in jeopardy. We need to hear the words of Jesus Christ. What are you going to do today? Go into the vineyard and help. And there are some of us who say yes and then don't do anything. And then there are others who scratched their heads and said, well, maybe there's something to this. I will go out. I was hesitant. We stay are these two sons. We have a choice. We have a choice not simply to live the conviction of our faith, but to do something that matters for the world, for the greater world, and for the world and the nation in which we live. You see, we are also those who have turned our backs on prophets, on John the Baptizer, as Jesus referenced in this gospel. Do we look to those who manifest righteousness, or are we deceived to act out of hubris and arrogance and conceit and bombast? Jesus says we're more than that. We're here out of love for one another. And if sinners, if prostitutes and tax collectors can hear that, why can't you, directed towards those who are the leaders of the country of Israel, the elders and the chief priests, why can't you? Why can't we? Why can't we hear and take to heart these readings of Scripture that empower us to make a difference in the world. The threshold of our own self-destruction as a nation for everything we believe in. We, many of us, look to someone as a false prophet and savior. Our strength is being united Our laws matter. Only in that way will we truly know what it is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and to live with courage and conviction. For you see, we will be judged by the manner in which we lead our lives. Are we ne'er-do-wells who only act out of convenience? Faithful. Are we the children of God who hear the invitation, come into the vineyard, make a difference, bring love and service and compassion and justice and peace and equality to all your sisters and brothers? And when you do that, we will be strong. And when we be do that, we will know what greatness really is the greatness of serving Christ by the manner in which we serve and love one another. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God in heaven, you know our needs before we speak them. We lift our hearts to you in prayer. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer for the grace of conversion, that God will help all who have made poor or destructive choices to change course and follow Christ who is in the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for discernment, that the Spirit of God will guide us, give us insight and understanding so that we may recognize God's invitation and follow the light path of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who are Jewish, who begin their high holy day of Yom Kippur this day. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our cities and neighborhoods, that God will give, help us recognize the systemic injustices that exist within our communities and give us the courage to work for change and recognition, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for world leaders who are meeting remotely through the United Nations, that God will help them listen to the needs of humanity and give them wisdom in developing policies so that all may have food, safety, and live in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in our parish and neighborhood who are ill, including those with COVID-19, that God will ease their pain, help them to receive life-enhancing treatment, and restore them to their loved ones. In particular, we pray for Joan Baker, Eileen Bershek, Hillary Clinton, Robert Schein. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. and Creed, Angela Mackin, Anna Maria Landetta, and Elizabeth Landetta. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal intentions we carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Finally, for the peaceful repose of the soul of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg for the consolation of her family and colleagues, and that her legacy might be honored. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we trust that you will look kindly upon our intercessions. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this water mixed with wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, and we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Rocco, St. Aloysius Gonzaga, St. Lawrence O'Toole, St. Ignatius Loyola, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now sign a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives. There are a few announcements. Next Sunday, October 4th, outside the parish house at 980 Park Avenue. Following the 11 a.m. Solemn Mass, or this Mass, parishioners are invited to bring their pets for a blessing and celebration of the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. We need to remember our pets during this uh, pandemic as well for a blessing. And then following the blessing, a butterfly bush will be planted in the front garden of the parish house to commemorate the closing of the season of creation 
that we have been celebrating for the past five weeks. Also, online registration for the next session of our inter-parish religious education program is open. To register, please visit the parish website. Site for the Christmas Angel Project that continues through this weekend. And for details about that drive, uh, go to the parish website. If you are thinking about becoming a Catholic already, or are already a Catholic, but have not yet received the sacraments of First Communion or Confirmation, please consider participating in our Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults program. For more information, please visit the parish website. There's a lot happening on that parish website. I invite you to view it periodically to keep current. And if you're not on our email newsletter, which has equally an, uh, a large uh, amount of information, I encourage you to sign up to receive our email newsletter as well. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God.